What's up everyone, it's Gene here and today we're going to be demonstrating how Zerto can be used to uh, recover from ransomware event in your virtual environment. Before we begin though, I'd like to first provide you with a warning that you should never attempt to experiment with any type of crypto locker software in your production environment. Now if you do want to test this in an isolated lab, please be aware that while you can find simulators on the internet freely, uh, you should still be cautious, especially if the simulator only includes an encryptor and not a decryptor. Once again, I cannot stress this enough, do not attempt to do this in a production environment. Please do not be that person. Now that we've gotten the warnings out of the way, let's get to the demonstration. All right, so here's my lab, which consists of two vSphere sites, one in Seattle and one in Denver. Uh, I've got Zerto installed on both of them and I've paired the two. There's my web server that we're gonna use for the demonstration. I went ahead and already created a virtual protection group that replicates that server from Denver to Seattle, uh, yeah, called it ransomware. And that's just to speed things up and start getting some generated checkpoints uh, after that initial sync. Uh, here's my web server with uh, the scripts on it to encrypt the system. I've got a bunch of dummy files and three subfolders of my web root, uh, which actually hosts a live uh, sample or test IIS website uh, for the demonstration. Before I even encrypt the files, uh, I want to, well, I can start it now, but what I want to do is add a tag checkpoint into the journal so when we do recover, it, it just gives me a quick and easy way to identify where to go to. In normal production environments, you're, you're not really going to have the luxury of knowing when ransomware is going to infect a system, uh, so you wouldn't be going through what I'm going through uh, with the tag checkpoint. Uh, to verify the, check, the tag checkpoint has made it into the journal, I'm just going to start a live failover but not execute it. I'm going to click on the checkpoints here and then we can see that yes my tag checkpoint did make it into the journal. So we'll cancel that for now. We'll come back here later. And now we're all set to start encrypting these files. And there it goes. You can see at the top of the list there, the default.htm file was the first one to get encrypted. So that is our website. Uh, we can go and verify that remotely from my workstation here that indeed the data has been encrypted. It's totally unreadable. There it is. All right, so let's close this and get back to the web server. And we'll just wait until uh, we complete, uh, the, or actually the script completes. Uh, before we take any rec recovery steps. All right. There we go. Everything in this folder and subfolders has been encrypted, so we're pretty much done with this server for now. But before we kick off the, uh, the failover, um, what I want to do first is jump back into vCenter and I'm going to be disconnecting the NIC on that virtual machine to prevent any further spread of the, the infection or, or the, the crypto locker. Uh, because they're, they're typically known to also crawl any network shares that are attached to the server, which lead to further infection down the chain. Um, so we want to uh, limit that as much as possible by disconnecting the, the network card on this virtual machine. And basically why I'm doing this is, well, for one, to get off the network, but two, uh, prepping it for failover uh, where I will have Zerto shut it down. Uh, but... Uh, I also want to be able to later take this, clone it off into an isolated environment, and hand it over to my security team so they can do some forensics on it. So now we'll kick off this live failover. Uh, we'll bring the system up uh, via Zerto in, in the Seattle vSphere site. I'm going to select that tag checkpoint I entered earlier before the encryption took place. 
and then now here's where I'm going to force shut down that virtual machine. Um, I really just want Zero to take care of all the work for me. It's that easy. Right, when we're all set, we just click start failover. And then we'll jump over to the Seattle vCenter and we can start, we'll, we'll start to see the activity take place. And then soon enough, that Denver web server will show up there underneath the uh, normal priority resource pool. There it is. It's already powered up. Let's open up the console. Can watch it boot. Um, it's going to have one reboot afterwards because I did pre-configure the IP address for this site. Um, so that's that's going to you'll you'll see that here shortly. All right, there's that reboot. Now when it comes up, I can actually log into it, and we can start validating whether or not. The system is back to uh, an unencrypted state. But you can't type that fast. Right, let's browse the web routes and we'll open up a couple of files to validate whether or not they're encrypted. There's my HTML file in all its glory. Here's an image that we encrypted before we did this. Now we can access the image. And then I also want to uh, jump out of this remote session or console and also open it up in my browser but because this jump box I'm on is not on the domain that that servers on I gotta rely on good old host file uh, for my fake DNS there we go it's back All right so up to this point, I've taken all the steps to validate the system um, well for one I know exactly what was encrypted so I've just verified that it's now not encrypted. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and commit this failover. Um, I'm going to disable reverse protection because if I, if I turn that on before I commit or when I commit, it's basically going to un unregister that VM uh, in the Denver site that's infected and it's going to overwrite all that data. So I, I had it not reverse protect because I don't want that to happen. Now I can actually go and clone that system and do what I need to do with it for my security team. Uh, once they've got their hands on it, then I can go back into Zerto, edit that VPG, and click done, and then it'll start resyncing, uh, therefore creating a brand new copy of itself in its clean state, and, uh, and then continuously protect from there. All right, and that's it. That's how... Quickly and easily, you can recover from ransomware with Zerto.